Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Chrono Corsairs. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to this cursed treasure island uh, that is trapped in a vortex, a time vortex, which means anybody who happens to find themselves here is doomed to live the same day over and over again. Just like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. And wouldn't you know it, we've got two pirate crews competing to find treasure uh, and stay one step ahead of each other and also live the same day over and over again. But don't worry, that's a good thing because we can use the knowledge we've learned to get further and further, deeper and deeper, and richer and richer. So, I've got the game set up here as a two-player game. I'm the orange player. Jen over there is the blue player. Each player starts with a hand of two artifacts. I've got a misenchanted map and a guiding compass. Those could both come in handy. Although, if I don't use them, at the end of the game, each one of these cards will be worth one point. Time crystals are points. So, I don't want to use them unless I need them. And Jen's got her own two cards over there, and we are ready to go. Now, the uh, turn structure for this game is pretty simple, and we've got it at the top of our player boards here. Here's what it looks like. Every day, um, and remember, we're going to repeat the same day over and over again. First, we'll deal with destabilization and anomalies. Then, we will draw and select plans. We'll figure out what we're going to do for the day. Then, we actually do our stuff. We run the loop. And then finally, we get to find treasure and then set priority for the next day, which means adjusting turn order. So, first off, destabilization and anomalies. Let me go on ahead and give this anomaly deck one more shuffle, because this is a series of events that will affect us. And the interesting thing about this deck of cards is we put it face up on the board, which means not only do we know what's going to happen today, we know what's going to happen tomorrow. Boy, which is another copy of today. So right off the bat, we are going to have stutters in the time stream. And this sits over here, and we know tomorrow we're going to be wondering where did everybody go? So, there's a little bit more to it than that, because if we look at stutters in the time stream, uh, moments seem jumbled out of order, like a ship's hold in a storm. Is this part of the same loop, or did uh, is it deja vu from loops gone by? So, there are these icons here that indicate how far along we are in the game, because we keep track of time on this vortex track. And this is the timer for the game. Once we get all the way here, we will finally break free of the time vortex and tally up our final score. But right now, we are in these early icons, which means this event is going to happen. This event will keep ha if And if we had played this card later in the game, when we were getting close to the end, it would be this event that happens instead. But right now, we're going to deal with this event. Oh, and I forgot, at the beginning of every round, this marker moves forward one more space. Which I gotta say, is really weird. Most games, they have you put it and then they skip moving it on the first turn, but the rules are very clear. We move this forward one step, so time is already ticking. And anyway, today, uh, this loop, or this day, during the evening phase, each player performs two plan actions. Oh. Well, that is very interesting. Whereas if this came later, uh, we would have... Oh, we would do things crazily out of order if this came up late in the game. All right, so stutters means we are actually going to get to do five actions five, uh, because we're going to do the evening action twice. Interesting. Tomorrow, if we look ahead to what's coming... Uh, let's see, each player is going to put a crew member back into their shipboard and gets three doubloons. Hey, where did everybody go? I guess somebody went out and found some stuff. Alrighty. Whereas, again, if this came later in the, uh, in the game, we would lose half of our crew temporarily. Yikes. But, okay. So, that means next round we're going to have a little bit more doubloons to do some buying. Excellent. Alrighty. So, starters in the timeline, that's important. Uh, because on our player board, we can see at a glance what we're going to do each day. In the morning, all players, unless you reprogram this board, are going to explore an adjacent beach. Then, during daytime, we're going to explore an adjacent jungle. Then in the evening, explore a volcano. Except today, we're going to do this twice, if possible. And then at nighttime... We're going to move um, to a mysterious cave, if we can reach it. So, here's what we do next. We have finished with our anomalies phase. Now, we draw and select plans. Which means, if we look at our player board again, you can see, at the beginning of the game, 
each day, each player gets to draw one stable card and one unstable card. And these are how we're going to plan our day. But later on, if I've upgraded this, I might be drawing three stable cards and one, or um, you know, three unstable cards and two stable cards, etc., etc. But at the beginning of the game, each of us is going to draw one card from the stable and unstable deck. So here's my two plans I can make for the day, and here are Jen's two plans. Now, each of us is going to pick one of these cards in secret, and we're all going to reveal at the same time what we chose and what time of day we're going to do that action. So we are going to reprogram what's going on for the day. And today it's very interesting to reprogram the volcano space because it means we would get to do that particular action twice. So what am I going to do today? Am I going to try and form a raiding party or am I going to go mining? Okay. Let's see here. Raiding party. Uh, move into an adjacent jungle. And then kill two enemy crew in that space. Yes, folks, there can be a little bit of the uh, old pirate ultraviolence here. But that's okay, because remember, we're stuck in a time loop. Any pirates that get killed during the day... Tomorrow, they'll be back again, hale and hearty, ready to explore one more time. And I should say, the heart of this game is area control. What we're trying to do is move our pirate crew onto these different tiles that were laid out here completely randomly. Every time you play, you are going to get a different layout with different uh, rewards for trying to control different areas. And so at the end of the day, if I have more pirates in a given area than my opponent, I have won this area and I will get either the best rewards or sometimes the only rewards that area will reveal. And then, at the end of the day, everybody resets because we go on to the next day, but I do get to keep the uh, treasures I have accumulated. So that's why we keep going day after day and find different ways to explore by programming what we're going to do. So, right. I am going to either try to do a sneak attack on Jen and take control of a jungle, or I could go mining, which means I would move one of my officers into a mysterious cave, and I would get a time gem. Now that's interesting because already the last thing I'm going to do at nighttime is move into a mysterious cave. So the simple thing I could do is say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to upgrade this space. I'm still planning on moving into a mysterious cave, but now I get an extra time gem, which again is an extra point. So that would be a really simple one. If I want to go with this other one, then I've got to try to anticipate where Jen and her crew are going to be or more to the point, when they are going to move into a jungle, so that I could play this at the same time and move in <clears throat> and attack her crew. So, what do I want to do? And again, no hard feelings, because the crew will be back the next day. And, uh, and once I've played this card, well, that card's going to be there for the next round, and Jen knows when I'm going to attack and can try to avoid me. All right. So, hmm... And again, we have this extra wrinkle that we're going to do nighttime twice because of the stutter in the time stream. Let's see. And don't forget, um, in addition to my plans, I could use a guiding compass, which lets me move into an adjacent jungle whenever I want, if I'm willing to throw away a point. Or I can swap the position of two plans. So later on, I've got two plans. I figure, oh, I need to shift this up. I could swap them by throwing away a point. Okay. Hmm, let's see. We are pirates, after all. And and here's the thing. This mining, well, for this to really be successful, I have to get to a mysterious cave. And as part of setup, we have three mysterious caves. The wheel, the old shipwreck, or the hidden passage. You can see, though these ones are very far away from us. I We would have to be able to move, say, to this volcano, and then to this beach, before we could get to the hidden passage. But the programming I've got right now says, in the morning, myself and Jen we are going to move into a beach. Now, we start out here. This is where we come ashore. And we cannot come ashore. Or, you know, In the morning, the first move we make has to be a beach. It can't be moving to this volcano or, likewise, moving to this jungle. So I think, unless we reprogram our first slot, both Jen and I are going to come ashore on this beach right here. And interestingly, as part of setup, you know, if this beach had been over here in this jungle, there would be no beaches for us to come ashore in. And this first move would be a not particularly useful one, and we'd probably both try to reprogram it. But anyway, so I already know 
that at the morning, unless Jen reprograms herself, she's probably going to move the majority, or heck, maybe even all of her crew onto this beach. And now, if I can figure that out, then I can see on her next, you know, during daytime, she'll probably take some portion of that crew and move it from the beach, or a uh, crew who still hasn't moved, uh, you know, because they stayed, you know, at the boarding party, is going to move on to a jungle. And from this beach, there's this jungle, you can see the jungle symbol, and there is this jungle. So, I could anticipate Jen's going to move on to the beach, then she's going to move on to these jungles. Then, the third thing you can do is move into a volcano, and from this jungle or this jungle, we could get to this volcano. And then, the fourth thing, from this volcano, we could get to the Mysterious Wheel. Now, both Jen and I have access to that path until we start reprogramming our loop, and you must reprogram your loop. So if I can anticipate when Jen's going to move into a jungle, that's when I strike with my raiding party. So I think, yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I uh, Of these two cards, I'm going to pick this one. And now what I do is, once I've decided what I'm going to do, I keep it secret because it's important. There's an important difference whether I choose a stable or an unstable plan. So I don't want Jen to know I'm going to be unstable, and I'm just holding this waiting for Jen to say she's ready, and then we will both reveal at the same time, not only we reveal what we've done and what type of plan it was, but we will also simultaneously reveal when it's going to go into our personal timeline, our personal loop. Alrighty, so I've made my choice. Now, while I'm thinking about that, Jen's thinking about exploring or fanning out. Alrighty, she's got to pick one of these, and she's got to pick what, uh, what, where in her programming it's going to go, and to best effect. So, uh, exploring. Move one of your officers. And I should say, you these are always set up. It always says, move one of your officers to an adjacent place. Um, but the thing is, whenever officers move to a new zone, an officer can issue orders automatically, which means this officer moving to his zone can pick any number of his crewmates and drag them along as well. So that's what I'm saying. When you when you move an officer, you're moving an officer and potentially everybody else who is in that starting area or just a subset. So, so Jen could explore by moving into a beach and then moving into a jungle. Ooh, Jen could double time it. So that would be a very cool upgrade for her starting action of this is moving into a beach because Jen could move into a beach and then she could immediately move into a jungle and then she could move, her second action would be to move into a jungle. So Jen could move and spread out between all of these jungles and try to control both jungle areas and get the rewards from both jungle areas. And then she'd still have the opportunity from one of these jungle areas to move on to the volcano to ultimately get to the wheel. So that's pretty attractive. What was the other option? Fanning out. Select a volcano, and then move up to three of your crew from that volcano into three different spaces. So that's interesting as well. Ooh, because that means if Jen takes this fan out and programs it in her final slot, well, she would have moved to the beach, moved to the jungle, moved to a volcano, and then she would select the volcano she moved in, and up to three of those characters could spread in any direction. So if she gets over to this volcano, well, normally the basic plan is get to this volcano and then move to the wheel and take control of the wheel. But if Jen gets to this volcano and fans out, she could get to the wheel and this jungle or this volcano or this jungle. She could really cover a lot of territory. Wow. Those are both very exciting options. So she could get a... I, I, um, hmm. All right. And don't forget, we're going to... We, we go to a volcano, we have this action potentially twice, which is really interesting as well. Because here's the thing, if Jen figures she's going to explore, right, she will move on to the beach and then she'll move into a jungle, then it says move into another jungle, so she'll move into the second jungle, or hey, she's already at this jungle, she could move, to, uh, all right, from this jungle, she could get to, no, she can't reach that jungle, this is a volcano, this is a beach, this is a cave. So, yeah, I think she's going to do that fan out. That fan out sounds pretty cool. And by the way, she's choosing the unstable card instead of the stable card. All right. So anyway, so Jen has made her choice, what she's going to do and when she's going to do it. I've made my choice, what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. We all, once everybody's ready, we reveal at the same time what it is and when it is. And Jen says she's going to fan out at the end of the turn. And I say that I, instead of moving to a volcano, I'm going to form a raiding party.
Boom. Okay. Now, the cards we did not choose. We don't keep them. They just go to the bottom of the deck they came from. And here's the thing. If any player, it just has to be one player, plays an unstable card, that means the vortex moves forward and the game end is getting closer. If both of us had played a stable card, the timer would not keep moving forward. But if any one player, and in this case both of us played, we still move the vortex one step so we're getting closer to the more extreme events on the timeline. Those will start happening. Oh, and what that means is we know next round when we get to the where did everybody go, it's not going to be, because remember at the beginning of the round this is going to move forward, it's not going to be the, hey, get some money, it's going to be, oh, half our crew is going to disappear temporarily because they're all going to be gone. All right, so we know that's happening tomorrow. Or, again, the repeat of today when we uh, restart the loop. Okay, so we have finished drawing and selecting plans. Now it's time to run the loop and see how it goes, which means we are going to in turn order, and I am the first player here. Jen is the second player. We have these little flags to keep track of who's first and second. We're going to activate these things. I'm first. Move one of my officers onto an adjacent beach. Oh, let's see how fortunate that there happens to be an adjacent beach here. Now, the interesting thing is when you get to any of these steps, you don't have to do this action if you don't want to. In, or, and sometimes, maybe you can't. If there was no beach here and we didn't reprogram this step, then we wouldn't be able to move on to an adjacent beach. So if you're not going to do the main action, you can alternatively give yourself a doubloon, which you'll use at the end of the day to buy treasures and upgrades and stuff. So, but as it is, I think I'm going to move everybody onto the beach. All right, so my officer moved and he says, everybody come with me. So my entire crew moves onto this beach. It's going to be a very crowded beach. I could leave any number of people behind. And if I left an officer behind, and maybe some crew, on a future step, you know, during the day, I could say, or, you know, well, if I still had the move to a volcano, if I hadn't overridden that, I could have said, hey, you guys, come over here to this volcano, because maybe I wanted to take control of that volcano. So you can split up, but right now, I'm just going to keep everybody together. So it's very crowded on this beach. I'm done that. And now, Jen... Uh, because she is next in turn order. She's got the same command. She will move onto the beach. And you know, if we had multiple beaches here on any of these three spaces, uh, you know, Jen might go to one beach and I might go to a different beach. But right now, this beach is very crowded. I think everybody is going to get off ship. We've got the big land rush. Rushing, rushing, rushing to get over here. All right. So, boom. We have finished the morning. Now, it's very important to consider the fact that we did this in the morning because there is, in each one of these tiles, an event. They could be traps, they could be treasures, all kinds of crazy things can happen. But if a group of pirates moves into a zone at the time of the event, that event will get revealed and will either help or hurt that pirate group. Now, it said, if we moved on to a beach in the morning, then we would have revealed. But um, the beach we just moved on to has an evening event. So since we did not move here in the evening, that meant we would have had to move to a beach you know, um, over here, then we would have revealed this and it would have affected. But as it is, there was no morning event on this beach, so we're ignoring this event. We don't know what it is. We might find out later in the game because if a group of pirates ever moves here in the evening, then we'll reveal that. Okay, now it's time for the daytime action, move an officer to an adjacent jungle. I am first. And so, I got two choices. I could move this officer over to this jungle. Um, and, unfortunately, there's an evening event here, so I won't get to trigger it. Or I could move over to this jungle, because these are the two jungles that are adjacent to the beach. And, unfortunately, this is a morning event, so I don't get to find this. I'd have to move here in the morning, which you might think is impossible. How could I go from here to here when I'm just moving around from area to area? There are all kinds of crazy, special time travel shenanigans you can get into that lets you move around and get to places. But so if I move over here, and again, I could drag as much of my crew as I want, well, I'd be trying to take control of this section of the jungle. I wouldn't trigger the event, but at the end of the day, if I have the majority of pirates in this jungle, then um, since we're still in the uh, first part of the time loop, we're still on this uh, stage, then what that would mean is I would get this reward, which is draw two and keep one artifact. If it's later in the game, it's draw three and keep one. 
or draw three, keep one, and get a time crystal. And if it's the final round of the game, forget about drawing cards, just get three crystals. And so it gets more and more valuable the longer the game goes to maintain control of this region. Whoever is first will score that. So I got to decide, I've moved an officer in here, how many of my crew is going to follow? Am I going to bring all of them in? Or am I going to leave some crew behind so that I have a shot of having control of this beach at the end of the game? Because, or not the end of the game, at the end of the round. Because at the end of the day, we will evaluate every single tile. These three inner ones, the three, uh, what do you call it? Uh, caves, and the one, two, three, four, five, six outer rims. And so these are all opportunities to get treasure. So yeah, I kind of want to move all my guys in here, so I've got control of that area potentially, but I want to leave some behind, so I hopefully have control over the beach. And here's the problem. It is not good to be first in this game. Uh, one, uh, if you move, if you're the first to move into an area with an unknown event, it could be good or it could be bad. Uh, now, so far we haven't triggered any events yet, but also after I move, if I leave some people up on the behind on the beach, then Jen could follow suit and leave some people behind as well, leave more people than me, so that she would get the best reward on the beach. So, let's see. I will go on ahead and I'll bring along. Hmm, yeah, I'll bring along my other officer. And I'll bring along a couple of crew. And let's see, maybe I bring three crew. And now this means, I, if I go like this, then I'm leaving two crew behind. And I'm hoping that'll be enough to win first place. But you know what? If I don't get first place, since we're playing a two-player game, I will get second place. Although, on the first day, there is no second place. Um, or, you know, because we are still here in the, uh, the round circle portion of the time track. And that means... Uh, this is the reward for first place. One extra doubloon for controlling this beach. And when we get later into the game, the first place reward will be two doubloons and second place will be one. Later in the game, the first uh, reward will be three crystals. Second place will be two doubloons. Third place will be one. So, here's the thing. I don't know if it's worthwhile for me to leave two pirates here. Because then that just means Jen will guaranteed leave three pirates here on the beach and she will lock this in. But there might still be a strategic reason for me to do it. Because if Jen chooses to leave three of her crew on the beach and just moves forward to a jungle with her other guys, well, that means um, I'm sacrificing these two guys so that Jen leaves these behind because then she doesn't have as many people moving into the new areas. And don't forget, I'm planning on attacking Jen next. And here's the thing. Jen knows that. She can see that um, this group, because here's where my officers are, uh, when we get on into evening, they are going to attack if Jen is in a jungle. So if Jen moves into this jungle or this jungle, ooh. Ah. Oh, I have made a mistake. I have misplanned. Because here's my problem, folks. I moved everybody into this area. And it says, hey, um, next time I'll move an officer into a jungle and then attack. I put both my officers here, which means I cannot move. If Jen moves into this jungle, I won't be able to attack her because all my officers are already here and they won't be able to move in that area. So I should have left an officer and a crew behind. And that means if Jen moves into this jungle, then I can have... Um, either one of these groups come in here and attack. If Jen moves into this jungle, then I can have these guys who I left behind move in and attack. So, that's why I need to leave some behind so whatever Jen does, I can, I can pounce. And, right, so that's how I did it. I, I've split up, I've split up the party. And I've got a big exploration party and a small exploration party. Hoping to maintain majority here, but I'm not expecting it. Because Jen will probably leave three behind. But here's the thing. Jen knows. Jen would like to take as many people with her. She'd like to win this with as few of pirates as possible. And Jen knows that if I move, if she moves into this jungle where I'm already here, she knows for me to be able to attack, I'll have to move these guys out to come in and attack, or I'll have to at least move the officer. This guy could stay behind, and then Jen would, uh, and then I would be able to attack her and take out two of her guys. So that means Jen could leave two behind because she knows she could actually move her people in here specifically to draw my officer away so that I've only got one person on the beach, which means Jen would still win majority. Hmm, interesting. 
Now, I did say earlier that there's a huge advantage to going later in turn order because, hey, you can respond to what other people have done. There is an advantage to going first as well. If Jen were to leave um, you know, one pirate there to try to get majority on the beach and move everybody over here, then she knows next time I'm going to move my officer in here so I could kill two of her people. So she knows that's what's going to happen. Um, and then if there's only, if where's a tie for control of this beach and control of getting that free to bloom, the tiebreaker is the flags. And whoever is first in uh, turn order wins the tie. So Jen knows if she leaves two people here then um, and moves everybody else in, chances are I'll at least move one or heck, both guys in there so she will win this and she'll get a doubloon out of it. So she now has a decision. Is she going to tempt me away by uh, moving? Uh, right. Hmm. Let's see here. This is interesting as well. Thinking about this, and now I'm, I'm rewinding a little bit and thinking about my turn. I just said, hey, you know what? On I just moved over to the beach. That was fine. And then I just rushed over to the jungle. I didn't have to. I could have left all of my guys on the beach, right? And if I had chosen not to move into an adjacent jungle, then what happens is... I uh, just get a coin. And the more money you have, the more rewards you can buy at the end of the day. If I had chosen that, because here's the thing. Remember, I get to move into the jungle next round, and we're going to do this twice. Because the evening phase is going to trigger twice. So now I'm thinking about this a little bit more on my turn. There's no reason for you to move, because I'm going to get to move to the jungle and move to the jungle a second time. So yeah, I'm going to pass. I'm going to leave everybody on the beach, get a coin for not doing this, and then... I can, Jen only gets to move to the jungle once. So, I mean, and, and I, I can see she wants to get to this volcano to trigger the fanning out action. So I know she wants to move into the jungle. So yeah, I, change of plans. Before Jen took her turn, because I remember, I, I get to move to the jungle twice because of my raiding party. I'm just going to stand still. I'm skipping moving into the jungle, and I got a coin. Now it is Jen's turn, and now Jen's got an even tougher decision. Oh my gosh, because she can move one officer and any number of followers, including the other officer, into this jungle or this jungle, and she knows next turn I'll come for her. And I could even do it twice. Because I could, this is going to happen twice, I could move my first officer into there and take out two of and I can move a second officer into there. So Jen is probably going to lose, let's see, it's crew, not officers. So Jen knows she is going to lose, if she moves into this jungle, I'm going to attack her twice, she will lose four of her five crew. Which means after that double attack, she'll just have two officers and a single crew left. But that means she, they will have survived for her to move this little ragtag crew over to the volcano. And then at the end of the day, from this group, these three could split to go to the mysterious wheel and to this jungle and to this jungle, let's say. Or to the volcano or whatever. So it'll still work. It'll still work. But if she moves all three of these out, then I will get control of that region. And also, if she moves everybody out, she won't have left anybody here, and she's leaving the beach for me. Folks, if, in case it's not obvious yet, this game is diabolical with its depth and mind games you play with other players because there's so many move counter moves you can see. Every, you know, it's perfect knowledge. Once these cards are played, you know exactly how things are going to play out, but you still have to anticipate what are players going to do. It's really. Very, very interesting. So, all right. Um, does Jen run away from the beach? Does she just say, hey, uh, right, this is interesting. This is the better jungle because the reward for this jungle is draw two artifacts and pick one, whereas the reward for this jungle at this early stage of the game is just get one artifact. So if Jen is... Um, if Jen is going to move into a jungle and then know that she's going to get wiped out and I'm going to leave people behind and that means I'm going to get a reward, then she probably wants it to happen here because... Although... Oh. This is interesting as well. There is... This event... This jungle has a morning event. This jungle has an evening event. If Jen moves here now during the day, then when we get to the evening, I'll come in. I'll come crashing in in the evening and we'll find out what that event is. It could be a good thing or a bad thing. All right. I think... 
I think all those things combined means Jen is going to come over here. So, she is moving one officer, and then she's got to decide how many followers. Does she leave anybody on the beach, or does she bring everybody because she knows she is going to get wiped out by a double raiding party because of the stutter in the time frame? Yeah, I think so. I think she's going to ignore this doubloon. She's going to cede that beach to me. Because she knows, if she just leaves one behind, all I gotta do is leave one behind, and I'll break the tie. So, I don't think it behooves her to do that. So, everybody rushes off into the jungle. Okay, phew! We have made it through the daytime action. It is now time for evening. I'm still first, I'm gonna go first, and I move one of my officers to an adjacent jungle, and then kill up to two crew. And so they're saying, this officer all by himself could take out two crew. And remember, I'm going to do this again, and so I could then come in again. But here's the thing. I've got another choice. I get to move into a jungle twice now. I could move in here and only take out two of Jen's crew, and then I could have another group move over here where they wouldn't attack at all, but I would still then maintain control, potentially, of two areas for end-of-game scoring. So anyway, yeah. My first raiding party will come here, and he'll bring... Uh, what the heck? He'll bring a couple of crew members. And I've done it. I've taken out two of Jen's crew. And anybody who dies during the day, they just kind of get knocked off over here. But don't worry, folks. It's a time loop. It's Groundhog Day. So these two sailors, these two crew members, will be back tomorrow. Okay. Um, so I've only just temporarily killed them. All right. So Jen is still in control of this region for end-of-day scoring. But because I just moved a group into an evening event area during the evening we now reveal our first event. And it's a good one! Oh, whenever pirates in the evening move into this region, they find three doubloons. Boom! That is a big, big payday. Like I said, this could have been a trap, and I could have lost half my crew, or all kinds of crazy things. But now, so that was a big reward for me. And now we, everybody knows. For the future of this game, we will, everybody wants to move a group of pirates here in the evening so we can get that huge windfall. I took the gamble, and I got a reward. But, you know, it could have been a bad thing. Let's look at some of this stuff off. Um, you know, I could have lost a crew member to snakes! Or, it could, or I could have found a time crystal. Or um, I could have found a single doubloon if I found a lucky monkey. Or I'm trying to find another way around. Or um, you know, somebody dies again. And you know, generally it's gonna be people die or um you get rewards. Okay, so that was that. Now, um, that was my first of two stuttered evening moves. Now Jen is going to do her first evening move, move an officer to an adjacent volcano. Hey! So if she had left an officer over here, she could move over to this volcano. Oh, but no, that's fine. She's just gonna move this officer to this volcano. And I think, oh, right, she could run away. She could leave somebody here, but then they're just going to get attacked again, or she could run away. Right, so anyway, so that officer's take a couple of crew. So now, Jen controls this volcano. Here's the problem with controlling a volcano um, in the early game. Remember, we're still in the early steps of the time vortex, and as you can see, there is no reward in these early steps at a volcano. So you do, in the first round, usually, um, unless there's some really, I don't even know if there could ever be a situation. In the first round, you do not want to end up in a volcano. But at the ends, uh, when we get later on the time vortex, there are big rewards for controlling volcanoes. But remember, Jen's just moving this group over here specifically so that they could fan out and go to the wheel and to this jungle and um, to, let's see, uh, back to this jungle and try to control that jungle. So, right. So does she do that, or does she, and does she leave these people behind? Because, and see, yeah, 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 yeah. Or does she just bring everybody? Because if she leaves them behind, she could be trying to vie for control of this region. And now that's an interesting thing, because, so Jen just did her first volcano, and because of the stutter, I'm going to go again, and I've got a choice. Do I move in here, and now... Um, a raiding party only takes out crew. It doesn't take out officers. So I, Jen would still have an officer here, but this last crew would be removed. Or do I say to heck with it? You know, because here's the deal, folks. I've already got three people here. Jen's only got two. I could just say to heck with it. For my second one, I'm just going to move everybody and leave one person behind on the beach. And now I've got control of the beach and this area 
and this area. Right, and so, Jen knows that's the case. So did she leave anybody behind? Huh, let's see. Uh, did she leave anybody behind? Or did she just bring everybody because she knows I'm going to get killed? She knows I'm... I mean, I, I, I split up my party. She knows I'm going to move over here anyway. Um, yeah, I guess she just moved everybody. Just kept them together. So she's not going to lose any more. Now, it doesn't matter. That means, ultimately, three of these people are going to spread out when she fans out. And two are going to stay here, which won't help her. But... Um, oh, and by the way, not for nothing... When Jen fans out in the night and she fans out over here, she will reveal an event. And she could reveal an event over there. Interesting. So Jen's got a couple of events in her future. What the heck? She'll just go on ahead and just run away, thereby seeding this jungle to me. She could have left a um, you know, a couple of crew. But Jen knows. Oh, see, now this is interesting. Well, first of all, Jen knows I'll still win because we have an equal number of crew. So she left, left all these behind. If she leaves four crew, then she's winning, and she's pretty much forcing me to move in here again a second time so that I could take out two more of her so I can control this area. And that means she won't go there. But then that means when she does her fan out, she, nobody will fan out because only crew members fan out. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, I basically, my raiding party has really crippled her plans, but she didn't know that. But the important thing is, she does now know. For the rest of the game, as long as this raiding party is here, she can plan for that and try to stay away. Or heck, maybe even use that against me to tempt me into areas that aren't in my interest. Anyway, though. So, no, Jen did definitely leave... And she wanted to take three crew so that all three crew could fan out. Which means, pretty much, she could leave one um, officer there who is safe and who is vying for first place. There is no second place. So it's not really going to help much. Um, what the heck? She'll just... Yeah, what the heck? She will stay. Why not? She's just going to stay. So, she moved uh, to an adjacent volcano. Fine. And, uh, and she did it during the evening. This was a daytime event, so the event did not get revealed. Okay. Right. And so now, we are the stutter. I'm going to attack again. So I could move in here, but there's no reason for me to do it because there's no crew for me to take out. So I'll just move over here like this. Leaving somebody behind. So I own the beach. I own this area. I own that area. I've done it a second time. And now, Jen can... She can a second time move an officer to a volcano. Which um, is interesting. Is there any value to that? Oh, you know, if Jen were to now move this officer over to the volcano, these guys are still here. They could still fan out. And if Jen had one more crew who could have followed this guy, if, my, if she hadn't lost two crew right off the bat, then when the fan out happens, it could have been these fanning out or this guy fanning out to get to the old shipwreck in the center. But, uh, you know, that, you know, right, so. So Jen, um, but you know, I don't think Jen's going to. Jen is not going to move one of her uh, officers volcano because remember, if you don't do the action, you get a coin. So Jen would rather get rich. So she just spent some time where she was searching around, found some treasure, that was it. Finally, folks, we did that double stutter and we move on to the nighttime. I can move one of my officers onto an adjacent um, mysterious cave. Hey, I've got an officer here. Why don't I move him to an adjacent mysterious cave? And while I'm at it, hmm. Yeah, uh, no, I'll just have him move. I'll keep these crew here. So now I've got majority in one, two, three, four areas. So that was it for me. And I moved into an area with a daytime event at nighttime, so the event was not revealed. All right, I'm done. And now Jen, instead of moving into Volcano, she is, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, moving into a cave. She's going to select... Uh, a volcano, this one, and up to three of her crew can move into adjacent spaces. So, move, move, and move. So, at the end of it, Jen has control of these three regions, or these four regions, although unfortunately two of them are volcanoes, so they're not going to pay out. I have control over four regions. Jen left somebody here, but I'm, I'm still in control. But remember, Jen just moved into two new locations at night. At night. So, hopefully, I got crazy lucky and found three coins. Jen hopes she will get to find, uh, get some luck as well. Let's see what they are. Over in this jungle, we've got, boom! Jen hit the jackpot. She just got three coins. And now, again, we know 
that everybody wants to enter this jungle at night. And so we, I mean, and that could be our plan for the rest of the game. Just keep bringing that cash money in. But here's the scary part. Oh, Jen got lucky. Is she going to get lucky a second time? Oh, baby. Wow. Jack and pot. Boom. Nice, nice, nice. Jen just made some big money. No traps at all, just tons of coins. And again, we have more future information for future loops. These are places you want to end your turn at so you can get more cash for more purchasing power. Woohoo! Oh, Jen is loving it! And so that fan out worked out brilliantly. That was very lucky because there are a lot of traps. If those had both been traps, well, she would have gotten nothing. She probably would have lost these crew, thereby not gotten any rewards, although she wasn't going to get a reward in this volcano anyway. Because, um, you know, there's, there's no consolation prize for uh, getting hit with a trap other than knowledge that now everybody has. But anyway, so that worked out very well. Folks, if you're still with me, you're amazing. We have finished running the loop. And now it's time to find treasure, which means we evaluate um, you know, who won in each of their regions. And right now, it's pretty clear cut. I win this region. We are still at this point in time, so I get a coin. Uh, oh, actually, although, wait a minute. There is a specific. First, we are supposed to evaluate the caves. Then we evaluate the exteriors. Then we evaluate the interiors. I believe that's correct. If I'm wrong, check the Klingon subtitles, folks. But I think that's right. So, first of all, we evaluate the caves. Jen gets two time crystals, which are real points. Nice. And resolve a night event um, on a, t uh, a tile of your choice. Hmm, I think Jen will resolve this night event and get three more coins. Boom, boom, boom. She is rich. Um... Yeah, she could. Let's see. Are there any other night events? Oh, wow. We we know all the night events. These were put out at random. There might have been more night events on the board, depending on how it randomly got set up. But, um, right. So if there was a night event over here, Jen could take a chance and find out what that is. But why would she when she knows she could get three coins there? So, Jen has resolved the wheel. That was great. That was a big payday for her. And let's see. Oh, now I'm at the old shipwreck. My big payday, I'm not complaining, is one, two, three time crystals. I am on the board. Woohoo! Okay. So, that was that. Now, we uh, deal with the outer areas. I got one coin for winning over here. I won over here, which means I get another artifact. And it is a another map. I can swap the position of two plans. So, I can move stuff around on the board and change my plans if I need to. So, I won that area. Oh, and by the way, as you're resolving areas, the um, pirates of that area... Unless there's some kind of game-changing event, they go back out. Because, it, you know, time is resetting as we're scoring. These time is resetting and everybody doo -doo 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 is coming back to where they're going to start the next day. So we resolve that, we resolve that. Just resolve that. This area, I won. Nice. Jen got nothing. Um, let's see. And then this area, Jen got nothing because it's a volcano. Um, but this area, Jen, well, not only does she find these coins twice, but she gets another artifact card as well. A guiding compass. Move one of your officers to an adjacent beach. So, um, that could come in very handy for her because, hey, there's an adjacent beach up here. If Jen, during the day, gets into this space or this space, and remember, we could get to this space uh, pretty quickly if we start out going to a volcano, then Jen could use that card to get over here in the evening and find out what this event is, if it's a good event. Who knows? All right, so anyway, so Jen resolved that. She also won over here, which gives her nothing, because it's a volcano. And then I won over here, which lets me draw two and pick one. So, do I want another Guiding Compass, or do I want a Conch of Calling? Oh, I'll take a Conch of Calling. Let's do that. Um, right. And so that just goes back to the bottom of the deck. So, we have finished the uh, Finding of the Treasure... And uh, now we set priority. Whoever is poorest, whoever has the least crystals plus coins, becomes the uh, first player. Or not. Uh, basically, what I should have said is, they basically figure out what the new turn order is. So, uh, Jen has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Oh, Wow! That's surprising. Jen made so much cash off of that double bounty over there. Um, I am considered the, the weaker player. Oh, by the way, these guys who got killed, they also came back. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so everybody's ready to go again on the next day. Um, so, I get to choose. Do I want to still be first? 
Well, I need to think about next time. Next time, what's going to happen is when we ask, where did everybody go? Each player removes half rounded up of their crew uh, from the harbor. So we will have less people to run around tomorrow. And so I know that. So do I want to be first or second based on that? I've got this raiding party. That raiding party is going to be much more impactful tomorrow since we have already lost half our crew right from the get-go when they all mysteriously disappeared on that day. And nobody knows where they disappeared to because of time vortexes. Uh, yeah, I think I would rather Jen be first tomorrow. So I will be second and I will get to respond to whatever she's doing. Okay, so uh, that is that. And uh, finally, the last thing we do is outfit our ship. It's time to go shopping and spend all that gold. Because here's the deal, folks. Any of this gold we found, when the time vortex resets... All our gold is lost because it's like we rewound in time and we never found it. Now, we get to keep the crystals because they're magic. And we get to keep our upgrades, but we don't get to keep our gold. So we spend it now or we lose it. And we have a nice little menu of uh, things that we could buy right over here. So I could spend two of my um, coins to let me draw more stable or more unstable cards. So that gives me more flexibility when I'm reprogramming my loop. I could spend two coins to get more crew, and I could do that several times. I could spend three coins just to get a time crystal, turn a, turn money into points. Although at the end of the game, every two coins you've got is worth a point, but this is uh, basically, um, yeah, uh, you know, we get a point for three coins. So it's not a particularly good return, but... Um, yeah, uh, you know, but you might want to do that because you have excess money to spend, and you're basically you're converting, um, you know, temporary loot into long time, long term scoring. Uh, I could spend one coin to swap the position of any two of my cards. And remember, that's a thing I now have the ability to do. Uh, you know, I've got two, so I can swap already. So I don't think I need. But if I didn't have these uh, misenchanted maps. If I didn't have them, then I might want to swap stuff around to reprogram for what's going to happen tomorrow. Or I can spend five coins and get more artifact cards in addition to what I've already got. And remember, artifact cards, they implicitly have value. They are worth one or two points. So uh, that's not a great idea to convert uh, five coins into a point. But if I'm doing it to get more cards that will give me more flexibility and more control as the game evolves, that's not a bad thing. But you know what? What do I got? I've got five coins. I'm just going to do the... Since we know we're going to lose a lot of crew, I'm just going to spend four of my five coins and get two more crew. Okay. And those will help me for the rest of the game. And then i got one more coin... And one coin doesn't let me do anything. See, that's why if I'd only gotten one more crew, well, I think I will. I've only gotten one more crew. And then I had three coins left over, and I'll spend that to get another time crystal. All right, I'm done shopping. Jen has what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Jen has nine bucks. I think she will spend one, two, three, four, five, six, and get a ton of crew. Because Jen made so much cash, and that's really going to help her. The more uh, crew you've got in, a, in an area control game, the better. So that's one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. She could go on ahead and get one more. This is interesting. Yeah, she'll go on ahead and buy one more. And now she's almost got her entire potential crew. There's only two more to hire, and she's got one buck left. And she could spend that one, because she doesn't spend it, she'll lose it. She could change her fan out option. She could make this. The first thing she does. Oh, no, no, she doesn't want it to be the first thing she does. But if she, remember at the beginning, no. ah, shoot, she needs to get to a volcano. So here's the deal. Oh, if she didn't hire one more person, then she could have increased the number of cards she draws. because, And then I mean, she still had one more. She, if she puts this here, it doesn't do her any good unless she's at a volcano. And remember, that's why she put it over here, because she moves to a volcano and then she does the fan out. If she, and remember, this round, from now on, because next round we're moving up, volcanoes will be worth something. Uh, controlling volcanoes will be worthwhile. So if she fans out earlier, that means she wants to fa draw a volcano card. So first thing she does is goes to this volcano and then immediately fans out to this beach, which will trigger this morning event, to this beach, which won't trigger. But that can get her closer to that hidden passage. But this is incumbent on, will she 
she be able to draw a Volcano, moving to a Volcano card, which is why if she's drawing two stables and an unstable, she ups her chances of being able to put that here. So she goes to a Volcano, then she fans out, then she goes to another Volcano, and then she goes to a Cave. So she could do that, but that's a bit of a gamble. Right now, fan out is safe over here. But then what does that mean? Does that mean um, she had three bucks left over, she doesn't buy an uh, increased number of cards, she doesn't buy a crew member, and instead she buys a victory point as well? I think she'll do the same thing with that leftover three bucks she had. Because instead, she could get another crew and then throw a, po a point away, because I think she wants to keep this fan out next to that. And don't forget, Jen's got special powers she can do as well. The conch of calling. The time oh, the time bubble is awesome. Uh, until the end of your turn, two of your pirates in one space cannot be moved or pushed. They could still be killed, but um, a lot of effects in an area control game you might imagine are oh, whenever you move into an area, force people in that area to move away, or force people who are in adjacent areas to come to you. And a time bubble means you um, aren't affected by that. But even more important, since you're in a time bubble, at the end of the day, your people don't come back. They stay where they were. Which means on the start of the next day, you could have people over here and start exploring very deep into the island, which is normally impossible. So a time bubble can be a very powerful tool. Although you are giving up a point to play it. Hmm. Yeah, I think Jen's done. And so we have finished the first day. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of stuff. And so at the beginning of the round, we move on up. We discover that now it's going to be Remember, since we're in here, th each of us loses immediately half of our crew rounded up. So I've got um, crew one, two, three, four, five, six. So I lose three of them. And Jen's got more. All right, so they just they just died instantly. They'll be back on the following day. And Jen has what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Jen just lost four crew. One, two, three, four. So Jen's still feeling better than me. So where did everybody go? Well, we may never find out. And we also know that on the third loop, chances are when there is selective service... Well, actually, um, no. It's, it doesn't matter what. This is going to happen whenever um, we, we have to deal with this on the third day, the third, the third time through the same day. Okay, so we have done that. And now uh, each of us is still only drawing one card because we didn't upgrade our card drawing ability and then we start deciding what we're going to program. I've got the power of the Vortex. Choose a space where I already have an officer, then move all enemy pirates from an adjacent space. So uh, my officer can pull Jen's um, uh, pirates, officer and crew, away. So I could like have a single officer in an area that I already know I'm going to lose, and um, I could pull all of Jen's areas out of an adjacent space. I'm already losing the area that I've moved it into, but now I've cleared an area where I could win elsewhere. And then the other one, uh, Captain's Orders, move one of my officers anywhere. Oh my gosh, that is so huge. So, do I want to be able to mess with Jen? Because I know, kind of, I mean, I know she wants to get to a volcano and then fan out. If I use my power of the vortex and I am next to the volcano she's going to, I could pull them out, except I can't! Because I'm not first player anymore. I took that away. So Jen would get to fan out before. So, yeah, I don't think the power of Vortex works for me. It's going to be Captain's Orders. And by the way, this is a stable card, which means if Jen also plays a stable card, we won't be rushing the end of the game quite as quick. And Jen, meanwhile, she's got to choose another opportunity to fan out, this time from a beach. So Jen could move on to the beach, and then instead of moving to a, a, a jungle, she could fan out from this beach and go into all kinds of different directions. Or Jen could gather. Again, uh, you know, select a beach and then move any number of your crew into that space and get two doubloons. So that could be a way to get to this beach. Like, um, you know, so if Jen puts this over here and then she gets crew moved to this volcano or, you know, this beach somehow, um, then she could have people from here get pulled over to this beach at nighttime, trigger the event, which is hopefully a good thing, etc., etc. So Jen's got an interesting choice to make as well. And Jen's got to decide, I'm winning right now. I've got four points to her one. I don't think she wants to rush the end of the game necessarily, because she hasn't gotten as much use out of her fan out. But she has a lot more crew. So I think if she chooses the gather, then she's got to decide, when does she want this to happen? I mean, she could say, hey, you know, at the beginning of the round, instead of just moving onto a beach, she could gather, which means select a beach, move any number of crew uh, of your adjacent crew, but not 
Uh, so the crew could move over here, but no officers would because officers don't go out and gather. That means she would leave her officers, which um, could then move to this jungle and then still get to the volcano. And so this means she could still get on this beach and buy for control. And now it's worth two doubloons to win this beach. And she'd get more coins. So that makes sense. I think that's what Jen chooses. We reveal at the same time. Jen says she's going to gather instead of move. And I say... I um, And i got to put this someplace. Um, you know, And I might say, hey, rather than going to... And also, I could override an existing card if I wanted. This would just go back to the bottom of the deck it came from. But I'm going to keep my raiding party. And I'm going to say, you know what? Maybe I want to move to a jungle. Maybe I want to move someplace else next. I'll always move on to the beach first. Then I could go anywhere. Then I can trigger a raiding party. And then I could use the cave again. Jen's got her plans. And folks, we're about to um, start the loop once again. But I think I'm going to stop right there. Because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Chrono Crosshairs is, Corsairs is all about. And if you want to hear some final thoughts... And I won't be alone today. I've got a special guest uh, joining me. You can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.